Good morning, dealers. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited to share with you all more ways to increase your dealership success online. Um, my name is Haley Holland. I'm the Marketing Programs Manager here at Dealer Spike. Today, my co-host and I will be diving into best practices for inventory images, how the industry as a whole is seeing and will continue to see a massive increase in e-commerce or, you know, shopping online. And then what, what you can do with your images to see the best ROI. But before we jump into the webinar, I just want to point out the control panel you should be able to see there on the right side of your screen. You can minimize or expand this at any time by clicking on the orange arrow button in the corner. We have set aside some time at the end of the presentation for questions, so use the question section in your control panel. I also want to let you know that we are recording this, so following the webinar, you can view this presentation with your team. As I mentioned, my name is Haley, and I'm the Marketing Programs Manager for Dealer Spike. I have worked with dealers, OEMs, distributors across the country for a few years now, and I'm overjoyed to be with you here um, today to share more about how you can better your business through higher quality images and, uh, and walk around. So what are we talking about today? We will be covering a few topics today, starting with how the e-commerce landscape has changed and will continue to change. We're going to dive into the best, uh, into inventory best practices. And of course, take some time to recap and answer questions at the end. I'm excited to be joined today by one of our senior customer success team leads, Jose. Jose, you and I have known each other for a long time now, um, but for those viewers who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Haley, for the warm welcome. As Haley said, my name is Jose. I am a customer success team lead here at Dealer Spike. In total, I've worked with Dealer Spike for over five years and have worked with many of the dealers here on this call as well. I'm excited to share about ways you can take better quality photos that lead to higher page views and more opportunities for you to close new leads. Fantastic. Well, glad to have you here, um, Jose. Thanks for taking the time today. With that said, let's dive into our uh, presentation. So Dealer Spike has been monitoring e-commerce growth throughout this year, particularly paying attention to the sheer growth, um, the large spike we saw after COVID really hit us, you know, right around April. In years past, we've seen a typical growth of about 1% per year. That changed immensely when we were pushed to remain, um, remain at home. And I'm sure most of you have heard this before, but the selling landscape changed from primarily on the lot shopping to mainly shopping online. In fact, we've seen a decade's worth of growth in a matter of months, and we'll continue to see that steady upward trend well into 2021. And honestly, I'm guessing even beyond that. So what does this mean for you as a dealer? Well, it means that your customer base is starting and in some cases ending their buying process online, right from the comfort of their own home. And since this shift, we're seeing customers searching websites with the intent to buy. In other words, more motivated buyers are searching dealership websites like yours right now, looking to buy it quickly. So before we dive into talking in detail about inventory images, what can you do to prepare already your digital storefront for these serious buyers? Well, in a nutshell, optimize your virtual showroom. And one example of doing this is higher quality images which will lead to better online engagement for you, with your shoppers, increased sales, and higher ROI. I totally agree with what you just mentioned, Haley. We'll continue to see exponential growth in online sales and e-commerce. We wanna make sure that our clients are trained on our tools and industry best practices. We want your customers' uh, buying experience to also be as seamless as possible. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, I think with that, let's, let's dive into uh, the importance of having custom inventory images. So, Jose, you know, what would you say is the first, you know, the first action most online shoppers take when browsing? Is it as simple as they just look at images? <laughs> That's a great question, Haley. Most people shopping online start their search by, re by reviewing the images of the unit they're searching for. 
According to a recent study by Bay Baymer Research, 56% of online users' first action after arriving on your, on your website is to look and begin exploring product images. Awesome. Yeah, I know for myself, I start, you know, shopping by looking at images. Um, I know I'm definitely more engaged with a listing when there are more than, you know, two or three pictures images. Um, can you tell us if there's any relevance between the number of images and conversion? Yes, there definitely is. Some of our dealers are seeing much higher conversion rates on listings with multiple photos. 17% higher with one or two images. This is custom images not including the stock image or 62% higher with nine plus images per unit. Right, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then another question for you, Jose, what are your thoughts on using stock photos? Um, would you say it's more important to, for a dealer to use stock photos versus real photos? It's, it's better to use authentic unit images, even if it's only one, and the data shows that. Replace any stock photo for any unit with real photos as soon as possible. Stock photos should only really be met as a temporary placeholder for your custom images. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Great point, Jose. So you mentioned um, conversion rates. Can we talk about, um, you know, page views and, um, yeah. you know, having multiple inventory images? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, very important to have multiple images that a dealer has taken themselves, which equates to higher page views. It just means, means more overall engagement with your website and your inventory. In fact, according to a recent auto trader study, having multiple custom photos, approximately 10 or more photos per listing, saw 349% more page views over listings that just used a stock photo. And that's vehicle page views, right? So vehicle details page or VDP, right? Correct, that's the, the VDP, the vehicle detail page. That's insane. Okay, um, what else would you say is important to get to see greater results? Yeah, you know, dealers should keep in mind that clear quality inventory images attract more online engagement overall. Provide transparent and trustworthy buying experience, confidence and accuracy of the, of the authenticity of the unit, and ultimately gain more online leads. You know, when you're buying a, a piece of inventory that's in the thousands of dollars, you want to make sure that you have as much data, photos as possible um, to, to gauge your interest and ultimately uh, want to buy that specific unit. Absolutely. Yeah, the, you know, providing a transparent, trustworthy buying experience, that, that sticks out to me. Um, you know, we're all shopping from home or most of us are shopping at home and uh, you know, can't really, we can't hide behind stock photos. We gotta be able to show the actual unit. And I know we're gonna touch on that more moving forward. So great point, Jose, thanks for sharing. And ultimately dealers, going back to the um, whole point uh, Jose just said, our goal of this webinar is to really help you and, and show you how to grow your online leads. We wanna arm you with the right tools to be successful. So let's jump into recommended photography uh, or uh, photographing best practices. So you can start taking better photos of your inventory. And something Jose mentioned is authenticity. So I'm gonna start off by talking about that. It's important to remember dealers to be authentic with your images. So how can you do that? Well, first stay true to your branding. Uh, we know that each one of you has your own unique flair, your own branding. So I do encourage you to work that in somehow. But remember, your images should still be high quality and um, have a professional look to them. Also, be sure to include any special features like heck, a, a sound system or custom hy hydraulics. And remember to make time for quality. As we saw previously, you don't need hundreds of photos to get great results. Um, you know, nine plus photos, a 62% increase. So right there should tell you, take time for quality over quantity. And take pride in your listings, in your inventory. Take a few extra minutes to polish or clean, um, clean your inventory, even those pre-owned units. And try to avoid busy backgrounds, such as high foot tra traffic areas, 
um, or even the main showroom floor where your unit isn't necessarily by itself, which I know isn't always possible to do, um, but try to pull the unit away from others like it if you're unable to get it alone without distractions. I used to work with a dealer who actually built their own staging area within their dealership. It wasn't overly fancy, didn't cost a lot of money. They had a ring light, a black um, cloth backdrop, and they had enough room that allowed the cameraman to actually walk around and take pictures of all angles of their units. Now, staging isn't necessary, but it can help ensure you're taking a well-lit professional photo of the unit alone. The last thing I want to recommend, investing, invest in a, in a tripod stand to keep things steady. I know for me, I have really shaky hands. Good thing I didn't become a surgeon. Um, but I know that there are uh, easily accessible tripods that you can purchase to keep things steady, keep things straight through Amazon, Walmart. I've even seen them at Best Buy and for not much money. So something that's not up there is that you don't need a fancy camera to take high quality photos. In fact, you can actually purchase lens attachments for your iPhone or Android that work quite well in taking photos of your inventory. They deliver that same high quality look without having to um, think, you know, thousands of dollars in a high tech um, expensive uh, uh, camera. So Jose, now we've discussed important ways to remain authentic with our photos. Can you tell us about best lighting practices? Of course, let's dive into those outdoor lighting practices. So imagine it's a sunny day, you have fresh inventory to list. Let's grab that camera and go outside and take some, so, some photos of that inventory. But what you should keep in mind while taking photos outside in terms of lighting, what should you keep in mind? It's ideal to show off color, especially specialty or custom paint jobs with metallics. Let the natural light outside highlight and showcase those gorgeous paint jobs, especially if there's reflective or sparkle in the paint. Remember to keep the sun at your back, so we'll avoid casting a shadow that obscures the fine details of your inventory. Reflective spot photo, retake the photo, or modify the contracts using the photo editor tool within the camera or on your smartphone. Hey, Haley, do you have any recommendations for indoor lighting? I do, but before we move forward, Jose, I've always wondered, do you, off the top of your head, have any recommendations for a dealer that, uh, for, for like a photo editing tool? I've heard of PicMonkey, is that, is that a commonly used editor tool? That would be one. So of course, with any photo editing tool, you have paid ones, you have free ones, and then there's a subscription ones that you can find. Paid ones, the most popular one out there, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and then you have free online ones called uh, GIMP, where we'll just be GIMP.org, Inkscape, and that's just Inkscape.org, and then by subscription, and free, they have a free version of these as well, is Figma at figma.com. And then you have Vector without the O uh, right after the T. That's vector.com. Got it. Cool. Well, thanks for that. So let's look at indoor lighting. Um, well, first thing first, turn off the flash. I know, I said it. Turn off the flash. Use soft, diffused lighting to avoid those harsh shadows. This is a big one to remember because a lot of people rely on their dealership lighting or on their phones. Um, and because the dealership lighting is too dark, they rely on that flash uh, to take pictures and end up with either glares that come off their inventory or those terrible dark shadows that make your, your unit look like it's in a, a, a dark box. A great trick to avoid this is to place a sheet or a white screen in front of the light source or try to direct the light away from the unit and let it bounce off the wall or the ceiling. Um, lastly, try using a light box to eliminate the unit evenly. And for those that are not familiar with what a light box is, um, it's a flat box with a side of translucent glass or sometimes plastic that contains um, a light to provide an evenly lit flat surface. Um, I actually worked with a dealer um, down in Louisiana who built their own light box from DIY instructions they found through Pinterest. Um, so kind of a cheap option, but it worked for them. They took gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. 
The last thing I want to add, um, I know we talked about uh, briefly, you know, Adobe Photoshop, but try not to try to forego Photoshopping outside of, you know, making small lighting corrections um, unless absolutely necessary. This ties in, you know, what we talked about earlier about being authentic with your images. Customers want to see a realistic image, not a heavily photoshopped or heavily altered image while they're browsing your um, your site. So we get we get this a lot, especially from dealers who are just really, really busy. But do you have any recommendations for the order that a dealer should take their pictures? Um, any angles that they should remember to, to capture when in a crunch? Of course, if you're working against a time crunch, oftentimes due to weather elements or more incoming inventory, you want to take photos in the standard order. Left side, back, right side, front, front 45 degree angle, and the instrument panel or the dash panel. The optimal method is to take clear up close shots of unique features, any customizations as demonstrated here. Awesome. Really, do you mind opening up that example okay. for us? Yeah, absolutely. So dealers, um, bear with me while I open up this. We're going to open up a browser. So hopefully. Okay. Make sure you can still see this, correct? So in this example, uh, you see the unit is clean. It's definitely well lit, as you can see. The dealer was able to move the, the motorcycle in the photo away from um, any other busy backgrounds like other motorcycles within the actual dealership, so you're not distracting your shoppers. Right, and I, I really like um, you know, the few close-ups, the, the great angles. I also like the personal touch of seeing the Harley bar and shield. I think that's awesome. It doesn't take away from the photo. It actually adds a little something, something. Um, and we're not seeing a ton of people walking past. And like to your point, it's not heavily trafficked, and it's not uh, there's there's not other bikes in the immediate background that are preventing us from focusing on this one unit. Yeah, I totally agree. They awesome. captured a great 360 degree view of the of the motorcycle. They maintain great lighting while outside. And although the background isn't plain white or black, it's still not a busy background to where you're distracted from everything else that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way so we can get back to our um, to some best practices. Thank you, Haley. Of course. Okay. Yeah, so I definitely love the real life examples. It always puts things into focus, pun intended dealers. Um, now, before we pivot away from taking photos um, to uploading your photos, I wanted to pause really fast. Um, I do see a few questions that have come in so far. Um, I also see some great recommendations for photo editing. That's awesome. Thanks, dealers. Um, we have, I do see a couple of people asking if we're recording this webinar, and the answer is yes. We are recording. Um, we'll also be posting this to our YouTube channel so you can watch this later on. Um, and we will get to these uh, incoming questions at the end of our uh, presentation. So let's dive into best practices for uploading images um, into the Dealer Spike platform. So, Jose, oftentimes I think we forget about organization. Do you have any recommendations for dealers listening um, how they should organize their images for? you know, simplest and seamless image uploads? Yeah, I definitely do with all this inventory that we're posting photos for. You'll want to keep track of all your digital files. This will ensure uh, easy and seamless uploading to the correct unit. Um, you want to optimize your file organization to save time sorting through multiple images. It's best to create a file labeled either with the VIN or stock number for those pertinent photographs of that unit as well. Right. And I mean, it's a personal opinion, but Jose, do you have a, a preference? Would you do VIN or stock, no, stock number? I personally like to utilize a stock number. It's usually saves some time due to it being shorter than the, than the VIN number. Okay, awesome. Um, well, I definitely agree with all that. So what about best practices when it comes to aspect ratio? Can I just upload any old image that I want? 
Well, you can, but our dealer spike platform will display the images in a 3-4 aspect ratio at a maximum of 800 by 600 pixels. That'll be the resolution for it. Anything larger than that will be compressed, but will also take longer to load on your website. Anything smaller will look blurry if enlarged, very pixelated, and definitely not a best practice. PNG files are preferred, although the platform can handle both PNG and JPEG. And the dealer spike system mm -hmm. automatically converts the following sizes, anything above 800 by 600, 800 by 600 is the preferred, and then 400 by 300 will be upscaled. This ensures okay. appropriate image size when you're in the inventory or the vehicle detail page and thumbnails, unit slideshow, et cetera. Okay. Um, now, I'm sure most dealers listening know how to do this, but for maybe for those that might not or are not super familiar, can you tell us how to upload an image um, through the dealer spec platform? Yeah, let's dive into that. So when you're posting images to your website, the first thing you'll want to do is access your admin panel. Any new unit listings must be saved first in order to upload images. Um, oftentimes it looks like you can't upload your custom images. This is just because a unit hasn't been saved. Once it's saved, you'll usually have a stock image pop up that you can then replace with your custom images. The next step would be to click at the attached image button at the bottom of your page to select image files from your computer. You can do up to four at a time, but there's no actual limit to how many images a specific unit can have. Uh, this is where naming files by VIN or stock number comes in handy from your digital file. And then you'll want to drag and drop images in the preferred order that you want them to display on the vehicle detail page. Awesome. Um, and then last question for you. Where can a dealer find their images after they've uploaded them to a listing? Sure thing. So the first one you want to look into is the inventory manager. Here's where you can rearrange the sequence of the photos you just uploaded. In the grid view inventory manager, you can see how many images your each unit has. And then there's another one too, another third option, where it's your admin drop down, go into inventory stats, and it'll display the data points and it'll give you a full roster or listing of all your inventory with the number of images each piece of inventory has, including new and pre-owned vehicles. Awesome. Um, well, so before we dive into questions, um, I just wanted to recap on just a few things. And thank you, by the way, Jose, for sharing these best practices um, and, you know, just a nice reminder about how to upload and where we can see those images. So I just want to recap on a few things that, you know, it's really important to remember that we need to be adding custom images. Um, and when we say custom, um, we're meaning taking photos of your actual inventory, the live inventory you have. We know that 64% of buyers want extensive vehicle photos and data in order to make a buying decision. Um, you know, I think we can partially blame this on COVID, but people are shopping from home and they're no longer window shopping, you know, forget the phrase or forgive the phrase, but they're, they're looking and they're starting on your website. So you need to start creating a, what we call like a 360 degree view, taking photos, what we mentioned earlier, of all sides. Quality images allow buyers to fall in love with the unit itself. Like I just mentioned, I mean, this is especially important in this, in this current climate. Um, and what Jose mentioned earlier about making sure you're taking, you know, the left, the front, back, um, and a 45 degree, I encourage you to take, to snap pictures as you're walking around, almost like a 360 walk around to create a photo version. Um, you know, multiple authentic images reassure customers that the unit is real and available. Um, as we've talked throughout this presentation, it's important to definitely capture that. Um, you know, more images to see the best results we're looking at, nine or more, um, to see higher page views and higher conversions. You know, and then more interaction with your inventory, more opportunities to make a sale, which is what we want for you guys. And ultimately, a good quality photo contributes to a greater ROI for you, our dealers. Um, and that's our, you know, that's some of our biggest goals right there. So with that said, I'd really like to dive into some questions, Jose. Um, I know we've got some great ones coming in plus, plus, uh, thus far. So let's grab that first one. And then dealers, um, 
just in case you need a reminder where to find that, there's a, the orange arrow in your right side of your screen. You should be able to expand that. And there's a question section down below. Feel free to drop a question in there. Um, you know, uh, anything, anything you'd like to ask Jose or I. Okay, so Jose, I'm grabbing the first question. Uh, he, the Steeler's asking, what file types should my images be in? You didn't mention that. Yeah, so our platform does accept both JPEG and PNG files. Um, our platform does prefer PNG, and they're usually of better quality than the JPEG file. Absolutely. Um, I have a dealer asking, um, can I use videos instead of images? I, I'd prefer to film a video of, of my unit, like a YouTube. You definitely can. Um, it'll actually be complementary to the images you upload, so it won't replace the video. What'll happen is on your vehicle detail page for that unit, you'll have a tab next to the specs, the spec data that'll say video with your uploaded YouTube video from there. But the platform is able to accept up to 10 YouTube videos per unit as well. Fantastic. Um, and you know, a, a follow-up question of my own, Jose, wouldn't you say that YouTube videos would be great for SEO since Google owns YouTube? It definitely is great to build up your organic SEO. Um, it'll build it up over time. It also will just make people, uh, potential customers, stay on your website a lot longer when you have, um, even if it's a one-minute video, two-minute video of your unit, it'll make them engage uh, for a longer duration of time on your website. Awesome. Um, let's see, let's see. Wow, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Um, mm -hmm. Ah, here's a question. Um, I'm, an, I'm a new dealer, spike dealer, um, haven't explored the back admin too much, but um, is there a mobile application to access my back admin panel? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, definitely. Our back admin panel is responsive or mobile friendly. There's currently not a dealer spike specific app, but your back admin panel is responsive and mobile friendly to any resolution of uh, the screen you're on. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Okay, we are getting a lot of questions and we've got plenty of time to take them. So keep sending them in, folks. Um, I'm just trying to find you. Let's see. Um, do you have any best practices for walk around images? Ask a dealer in Arkansas. Yeah, with walk around images, uh, it really depends also in the industry you're in. You're probably going to have more walk around images at more angles when you're an RV dealer or a marine dealer selling boats. Uh, but walk around images. Uh, like the order we went through should be at least four to five uh, walk around images of the exterior of the unit. Um, that's that's the recommendation. Lighting is super key when it comes to walk around images. That way you don't have a distorted or obstructed uh, lighting of, of your inventory as well. And make sure to take it at okay. different angles. If you have to bend at the knees a little bit um, to get a better angle, <laughs> better looking angle, please do so. Uh, you know, a lot of oftentimes we get used to just doing a walk around at, at our regular posture and you want to make sure you get different angles than just uh, the usual one. Great. Um, I've got a question from a dealer asking, should every image have alternative tags, like an alt tag? We do recommend it. I know it's uh, more time consuming, but the reason for that being is because of two things. One, the alternative uh, the alternative text will also not only boost your SEO value over time, but if someone that is uh, using a screen reader on their computer as software to screen read what they're viewing online, um, that alt text will get read back to them via the software they're using as well. Great question, dealer. Um, I've got a dealer asking, do you, oh, do you add location to the unit? Do we add location um, to our to the units? I'm guessing I'm guessing they're asking Jose if we add um, like some sort of location tag or um, something that identifies where the the unit's at. Is that something that dealer spec offers? So if your if your dealership is located at just one address or one location, it'll just default to that one. But if you have multiple locations in one website with us, we are able to differentiate. 
uh, between each unit what location that specific unit is at. Awesome. Um, let's see, got a few more minutes and we've got a lot of questions. Um, let's see, how many is too many photos of a single unit? When does it become excessive? You know, that really varies by industry. In the power sports industry, the average that I see is about eight to 10 images per unit. But then you have, you know, RV, marine dealers, uh, agriculture dealers that have bigger units that also include interiors of, of, this, of this inventory. Um, so there's really no amount that I can say that is uh, not a best practice for too many images. Uh, like I mentioned before in the presentation, it's better to have more than, than less. We saw those statistics there of you know having uh, nine plus images, having a 62% conversion rate higher than just not having any images or just a stock image alone. Um, if anything, it'll just keep the engagement up for your for your customers. There's you know you have your your potential customers that really like to dive into the the inventory they're interested in. So the more pictures, really the the, the better for for uh, your inventory. Right. Um, I do want to I do want to piggyback on that. I know we've we've preached you know nine plus is the golden number, but quality over quantity. Um, I just want to clarify when we say quality over quantity, it doesn't. I what I mentioned earlier, you sh you shouldn't need to snap blurry, um, messy photos just to hit a number, just to appease or to try to get um, increased views or increased leads because that that will actually have a, a negative effect. Um, we want to build credibility into your brand um, and build credibility into your online store. So, um, you know. When push comes to shove, quality over quantity, with that goal number being nine or more. All yeah, right, totally. um, let's see. Let's see. Um, can I upload GIFs to my listing? Currently, our platform doesn't accept GIFs. Um, something that uh, we have it as a product idea down the road, but at this time, uh, it, it, we do not accept GIFs on on the platform, unfortunately. Jose, this is a more, um, you know, a little step-by-step -step question, but I think it's important, um, you know, to follow up on the alternative text. Um, a dealer's asking, how do I add altern or alt text to a picture? Yeah, so once you, that have... you can easily walk us through. Yeah, definitely. Um, on that step-by-step -step guide that we went through, once you save the unit and have uploaded your custom images to that unit, you will then have the ability right when you have the option to re resequence the photos in the order you want them displayed, you'll have the option per photo to click into it and add an alt text. There'll be a separate pop-up window that'll give you the option to enter that alt text and then save the alt text for that specific photograph. And you can do that for each one. Awesome. Um, let's see, let's take a couple more questions. Um, do you have a way to add text overlay on my unit i really want to say featured on on my tractors that are on special yeah that's a great question we actually have it built into the dealer spike platform you're able to add overlay text we usually have default ones featured is one of them uh, sold custom but you're able to add your own custom uh, overlay text to each unit and save it um, there's no limit to how many custom overlay uh, text or, or images you can put on a unit or have saved. Um, but this is a great way to market inventory that either is custom or has been on the lot at your dealership for a long time and you need to make that featured or clearance and, and moved out of there as well. Fantastic. Okay, let's take let's take one more question. Um do, 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 do. Is there a maximum number of images? I don't know if we've um, answered this one yet, but it seems to be a popular one, Jose. So let's just ask it again. Is there a maximum number of images I can upload? We haven't hit that threshold yet. I've definitely seen some of uh, my RV dealers that have uh, you know, pr pretty close to 100. Um, so we haven't, uh, as far as I'm aware, and as far as uh, our development and support team have, uh, have informed me, there is no limit to how many images you can have on a specific unit. You know, apologies, Jose. I do have one more question. I think it's really important that we, because um, I've seen it come through about 
oof, like five or six times. Um, and I, I think it's important that we make it just another minute um, and do we'll get you back to your days, I promise. Um, this dealer is asking, what if you need a stock image while you're waiting for a unit, um, but it doesn't come, it doesn't come up on available stock photos? Um, what is best practice there? I, I think I'm, un, or what I'm understanding from the other questions and just combining this question into one, Jose is, um, they're asking, what if, what if they can only use a stock photo because they're waiting for next year's unit to become available? Um, what's the best practice there? Yeah, so uh, that scenario happens uh, often or on rare occasion when a unit is either on two occasions. One, the unit that's being uploaded um, doesn't have a stock image because it's of a of a prior year. Usually, it depends on the on the manufacturer. Um, say, with for example, Harley Davidson, we can usually have a stock image by up to about 2008. Uh, we get our data from the manufacturers, so if they don't have anything before then uh, that we can essentially get as data and put it in our database uh, and that includes a stock image. We won't uh, unfortunately have that. With newer units like uh, now coming into 2021 here, um, we do have a team that goes ahead and, and collects that data from the OEM. If the OEM can does have that uh, a stock image available via the website, we'll have that and it'll pull up when you're entering each uh, each unit through the inventory manager. In the case that it doesn't have a stock image and it's a newer unit, 2020 and 2021, I would highly encourage you to get in touch with your, your customer success representative, your account manager, and see if they can work with our team to get a stock image for um, that model that you're uploading as well. Uh, if we're not able to get that because the, the OEM is not providing it, um, best practice would be just to have at least one custom photo um, there instead of having a essentially a, a, a blank space or a, or a, you know a blank box uh, instead of no custom image. Great answer. And dealers, we're still getting so many questions. These are amazing. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to uh, send in your questions. We are um, we are at the end of our presentation, and I do want to note that. If you have submitted a question, we didn't get to it, or we just didn't get you the answer that you were looking for, um, don't, don't worry. We will have your customer success representative reach out and provide you a more um, in-depth answer. Uh, and if that, if that fails, then there's always Jose. <laughs> Sorry, Jose, I'm throwing you under the bus. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm here to field any, any questions that we didn't have time for. So. Um, they can reach their their customer success uh, account manager. Uh, you can find their contact card in the admin panel, bottom right hand side with their uh, extension and email. You can also email us at our general inbox here at customer success or cs at dealerspike.com. And then we have a general extension as well if you do not know uh, who your uh, account manager is. And that phone number is 800-288. 5917 at extension 201. Wonderful. Thank you so much, dealers, for um, being here with us today. We hope that this was informational. We hope that you were able to get some um, helpful tips out of this. Uh, as I mentioned before, if we did not get to your questions, and there were a lot, um, I tried to grab as many um, as I could. Uh, we will be able to get to those. Um, your customer success representative will be able to answer them in detail. Um, again, the information is uh, the contact information is on the screen, cs at dealerspike.com, um, or you can give us a holler at 800-288-5917, extension 201. Alrighty, dealers and Jose, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate uh, all the knowledge that you share. Yeah, thank you, Haley. Thank you so much for co-hosting. And dealers, I'm excited to speak with you all soon. And we'll make sure that any questions that went unanswered uh, get answered in depth by either myself or your customer success uh, account manager. Okay, fantastic. Dealers, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.